How are we doing, YouTube? Are we good? Well, are we fine? I certainly hope so. Uh, we're back this week with the next video in our series for our look at the nostalgic Star Wars. Those old games that used to be amazing as a child and you go back and you play and you're just met with crushing disappointment. That's pretty much what we're doing. So, uh, we're in the last game of the Jedi Knight series today. Uh, which is Jedi Academy. Uh, now, this butte came out in 2003. I finished this one. This is one of the games that I've actually finished in my career. And it is... It's still really good, I have to say. Um, compared to Outcast Dark Forces, I thought this was better. Now, they made some changes on this game compared to what they did in the previous ones. And I suppose the major change to it is... Kyle Katarn is not a playable character. The The Jedi Knight series is basically the story of Kyle Katarn and how he goes from rebel mercenary to Jedi Knight. Now don't get me wrong, Kyle is still there. Kyle is in fact our master, but they have given us our own character. They give you an essence of character creation where you can play, a, where you can play as a human male, human female, a male Rodian, a female Twi'lek, that's what we went, uh, a female Zabrak, and a male Keldor. Uh, for those of you who are not nerdy enough, a uh, Keldor is like what Polkoon is. You know, orange guy, black mask. It's... It, and your your character starts with uh, a lightsaber, as opposed to having to go through a bit of a slog to then find the lightsaber. This one, you start with it. And you get to customise what the hilt and the blade looks like, which is really really nice. So you aren't stuck with Katarn's blue. You can you can go uh, your standard blue, green, as well as yellow, purple, and orange. I went green. Green is always what I go for. So I went a green female too, like. And you play as Jaden Core, and you have your story. Uh, the story in this case is a cult called the uh, Cult of Ragnos are trying to do something. Not quite sure what it is. They've got a scepter that does a glowy beam. Turns out, uh, they are essentially stealing the force energy from sites. You know, the Masasi Temple in Yavin 4 is the first one that you discover. And there's things like Dagobah. There's Hoth. You know, where, where they, you know, where Luke's had his vision of uh, Obi-Wan in Empire Strikes Back. Dagobah was where Yoda went. But there's also places like Vajun, where Darth Vader's had one of his fortresses. Uh, and Dagobah itself are, are, are locations that Luke doesn't directly mention because they're so powerful with the Force. So this cult is going around siphoning the Force power and then basically blasting their followers with it to turn them into like fake Force users. Uh, and we're basically trying to stop them. So the main protagonist antagonist in this one is uh, Tavion who Katarn spares an outcast she was the Sans apprentice we fight, we win, we spare her life she then becomes the big bad academy and the game follows a linear progression like it does with the rest of them but they changed how they go about the levels so the game follows a standard format of you've got like your intro kind of thing, your tutorial level. But you've then got, I think it's five missions that you choose from. So there's five missions for you to go and do in whichever order you decide you want to do them. It has zero bearing on the story. It's purely down to which ones you want to do. But you only need to complete 80% of them to progress the story. So you do four out of five of the missions. You can do all five of them. And then you do the next part of the story where you go from Padawan or Initiate to Apprentice or some shit, I think it was. Then do your next set of missions. You then become uh, a Jedi Knight. You go through those missions, you do the last part, you complete the game. Or something to that effect. It's maybe three sets of missions. And you with your fellow Padawans, you're working through this cult trying to discover what it is because... 
you're training to be Jedi, but the Jedi are having to take on adults at this point. And by taking... The, the reason that the Jedi take on children is because children haven't yet developed those emotions. You know, jealousy and rage and anger, all this kind of stuff. The things that lead to the dark side. Adults, on the other hand, have all their petty jealousies and thoughts and fears and all this emotional nonsense. And we have a friend who's some worm of a little fucker called uh, Rosh something. Uh, and that's pretty much it. He he is paired with you under Katarn to learn the ways of the Force. And almost immediately he's thinking that Kyle is holding him back. He sets a droid on you because he thinks it's a competition and he wants to beat you. So he sets a droid to slow you down, which is a training droid that Luke Skywalker uses. So this droid comes in and tries to fuck you up. And then, yes, he eventually starts to believe that he's been held back by, by Kyle. He gets captured by the cult of Ragnos and turned to the dark side. And you have to fight him at one point. And then later on, he changes his mind. And then your, your white side, dark side element to the, the story and determining what kind of uh, cinematics you get are, do you spare him or do you cut a motherfucker down? I usually let him live. He's a worm, but, you know, I ain't no Sith. So, you spare him, you have to fight Alora, who's like the second in command. Uh, fight Tavion at the end. Hey, you're done. If you decided to kill Rosh, then you have to fight Kyle and do what you would to Alora. Um... So the, the, the story's there, and by taking that different approach to allowing you to choose the options, it doesn't feel so linear. But at the same time, it's not like there's a different progression to the story. For example, with Knights of the Old Republic, uh, depending on what order you did the planets, kind of made more sense. You know, slightly better if you go this one to then go to this one, because it's something you get on this one. Academy doesn't have that. It's just, it's a different order of the missions. It'd be crack on. From a graphic standpoint, between this one and Jedi Outcast, there's very little difference. Uh, Raven Software did this one just like they did with Outcast, and there's only a year's difference between the development. It's really not that substantial with the graphics. It's, uh, it's pretty much still the same. But it looks good, and it plays well. They introduced a few kind of uh, combos, shall we say. Because you're using your lightsaber a lot more and using it from the start, as you progress your force powers, your character gets more combat ability. For example, have your lightsaber, swing, swing, swing. Right, great. Actual sword fine. However, when you get force level two, force jump level two, sorry, you have the ability to try and flip over the top of someone and cut them. When you have force power level or force jump one, you have the ability to try and cartwheel to the side while swinging at them and things like that. When you get force pull level 2, you can yank them towards you and impale them. So you get all these, these fun abilities that come with, I suppose, uh, an improvement in the engine that I'm not aware of being there in the previous one. So you get all these improvements with, with the engine that would do a few more things and the combo moves and whatnot. But it didn't, as I said, it didn't drastically change from the previous previous title. Your movement remains pretty much the same in terms of in the cutscenes and stuff. It graphically it's all the same, almost exactly the same. But the game itself, their level design seemed much more streamlined, shall we say, much more sensible. So we made comment in Outcast when we played it that the level design had you, you know, going through a facility. Then you have to drop down into a pipe to then go through. But the way to drop down onto that is you have to get onto something that extends, that appears and reappears in a dark corner of the facility with no indication that that's the way you're supposed to go. There's no way you're supposed to think that. Academy just seemed to flow much more. I was moving in essentially almost a forward way. Even when I was like circling around and cutting out here because this door is now open when it wasn't when I went this way, it still felt like a natural direction to be going. At no point did I have to stop and go, this way? 
This way. Did I come from that way? No, you just straight line. You just went. And the levels flowed much more naturally and made a lot more sense. I, I really like them. The level design on this is much better. And you got new weapons. Well, maybe not new weapons, uh, but there was more option. Uh, so when you when you start a mission, you choose your loadout. You start with a lightsaber, you start with a pistol. You can take two guns and a throwable. I always took uh, the anti-droid gun because against droids, it actually wrecks them. It's useless. It just is like a taser against other things, but against uh, droids, it wrecks them even better than your lightsaber can. So you just switch to that gun, bang, bang, away goes the droid. And I would take something else because you would always pick up a Stormtrooper blaster. You'd always pick up um, a bowcaster. One of those two were being dropped. So you'd always be able to get them. And that was a nice addition to have this kind of loadout. But I would take the same thing. As I said, you could pick things up, run it. We're all good. That natural progression made more sense in the levels. The loadout was a nice touch, not really necessary. I tended to just keep my lightsaber out. Run the saber, go for it, see how we did. And the I suppose the lightsaber combat as well was a bit more refined. You know, you you have your lightsaber blocks and parries and things. And you can get into an actual lightsaber clash, which can result in an instant death if you do it right. You do it wrong, it's an instant death for you. So there was a, when you get into a clash with someone, there's a there's some serious tension. You know, as you're as you're pushing towards them and they're pushing towards you, and if you lose that, the lightsaber is going through you and you're dead. Um, but there's some fun there's some fun missions uh, that obviously the improvement in technology allowed there's a level which is entirely on the back of a swoop you're just riding through either shooting from the front of, of the swoop or you're using a lightsaber uh, and basically like chopping them up as they get too close that mission was a lot of fun a lot of fun to do and it's a quick one actually the whole game is quite quick because it's an older thing I got through, what, two thirds of the game in about four hours before I had to stop and then came back. Um, you could probably finish this game in about six to seven hours. That's doing that's doing all the missions, playing through it. It's about seven hours. And it's a lot of fun. It up On top of the, the customization, it, at a certain point, in the game, uh, your lightsaber gets destroyed and you have to make a new one. So you're allowed to either go single style, dual wield, or you can use a double bladed lightsaber, uh, which come with their own different combat styles. I really like the single hilt to start with. And then I've gone dual blade and I'm getting my ass kicked. Mistakes were made. It's a very different way to fight them and you're up against more powerful opponents than they randomly have to try and discover a new combat style. When this game came out, there was a multiplayer function to it. It was a deathmatch kind of thing, capture the flag, stuff like that, uh, where you can pick different characters. You can go like Wedge Antilles if you want, who has lightsabers. Wild, but it's interesting seeing him use them. And you could have like two-on-one uh, battles, one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if servers are still active for the multiplayer. Uh, or if you can fight bots or what. I used to take on bots um, when I was younger just for fun. So that may still be an option. You might still be able to do that. But uh, yeah, I would say uh, Academy is worth going back to. Again, like the previous ones, there's some resolution options uh, that don't fit modern day monitors. You fire up on this, it's no problem if you're not doing anything. If you plan to record or stream it, and there's a bit of tinkering that has to be done in OBS where it'll cooperate but overall it works pretty well the resolution is not a huge issue and sits pretty nice on your monitor 
but the game still holds up. The combat still holds up. It's still a huge amount of fun to just push a stormtrooper off a cliff. I'll say it. It's fun. I did it a lot. So if you get an opportunity, grab this on sale or something, you should definitely revisit Jedi Academy. It's it's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, it's better than Outcast, I would say. Which would then put it as probably the best of the Academy series. Um, yeah, I would say it's better than the rest of them. So definitely take a look at this one. Get back onto it. Uh, I think the next video in the series we're going to do is I'll keep the kind of Jedi feel sort of together. We finished the Jedi Academy, no, the Jedi Knight series. So I think we'll maybe do Force Unleashed next. Just group those kind of Jedi ones together. Or we might go into the flight sim types. I'm not sure yet. But there will be another Star Wars video next week. We'll work on that for you. Uh, until then, you should definitely swing by the channel. Like, subscribe. Uh, you will find shorts, more videos like this, as well as our live streams where you can come in and hang out with us. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday is when we stream. Wednesday will be our upload days. Uh, there's a schedule in our Discord as well. If you want to join that, you can then know what we're doing. So until then, you have a good one. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you all again next week. Bye!